If you have your Bibles, go with me to uh, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. This is where we're going to launch from today. Um, there's some things that I really need to lay the rubber on the road for today, so I want you all to be, just be patient with me as we go through and do some things that God has for us. Amen? Amen. I won't be long, but it's, this is critical to you, your life and where you are right now. Very important. Very important. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to begin at verse 7. Um, this is the New King James Version. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, somebody say, that's us, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always caring about in the body. The dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then, death is working in us, but life in you. Are y'all there? Verse 13, and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raises up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed. Come on, everyone. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are Today, um, this is very important for all of you. Everybody say, learning to put your boots on the ground. Now say, learning to put your boots on first. That probably don't mean a whole lot to you. Um, when you're in a place of warfare, I don't care how many guns you pick up. I don't care how many t-shirts you put on. If you're going to stand, that's what warfare is all about. You got to have your boots on. Um, boots describe a law or a foundation that we live in, principles that we live by. And that's what we're going to talk about today. There's a subtitle, Knowing the Law That Governs Your Walk. There are laws that govern your walk, and it's very important that you understand them, that you know them. How many of you in here today are human? If you're human, just say amen. amen. How many of you in here today are born of a woman? Amen. Okay, so got quite a few of you are born or of a woman. Anybody born of anything else? <laughs> Hallelujah. So that brings you some legal rights in the earth according to the scripture. Because the last time I read in the Word, it says, except a man be born of the woman, or born of the water, and born of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So, in the kingdom of God, here in the earth, you have to be born of a woman once, one, and two, you got to be born of the Spirit. So, your legal rights only come if you are born of the water and born of the Spirit. Would you all agree? 
Okay. How many of you know the devil only has one of those? He was born as a spirit. He was not born of the water. So therefore, he has no power. I need us to understand that before we go any further. He has no power. Everybody say, no power. What he has is what we have given him. If we think he's powerful, you have to understand he has power only because we've given him power. All right? Everybody on the same page with me today. All right? But there's some things that we have to come into the presence of and you have to be able to walk with in order for you to get where you have to go. The body of Christ is being shaken right now. And there's a transition and a shifting that's going on among us, whether we realize it or not. Um, I don't know where they are in the Sunday school. Y'all do chapter 11 today? We all start? They, in that chapter, and those of you who are in that school of vision, they talk about the threshing floor. Okay? A threshing floor, everybody's got to come to. That's where your heart gets tested. And there's one of two things that will happen. You'll pull away or you're going to dive in. This lukewarmness doesn't work. You have to get to the place where you're, you're ready to lay it all out before the Lord. You're either all in or you're not in. Because lukewarmness don't work with God. Well, you know, I like this, but I don't like that. It ain't about what you like. It's about who he is. Okay? And I heard it said this morning, we're bringing heaven to earth. So if heaven's coming to earth, you don't get to dictate what you want. It's about your future and about you being a blessing in your future. Amen? All the stuff I used to tell my son, do this, do this, do this. Now he's in the place where... Man, I got to do that. And I said to him yesterday when I was with him, I said, yeah, but you delayed yourself. You could have had this a long time ago. But you delayed yourself. He's about to move out of one apartment into another one. And um, he, down there he had to pay a lot of money for rent if you wanna have an apartment. So he's moving in with a roommate who owns a place so he can save more money. We told him that a long time ago. No, but no, he had to have his own. I'm okay with that. But you, you're about to save $1,000 a month. Y'all hearing me? Over three years, let's see, $1,000 a month over three years. That's $36,000 you could have had put aside for your own house. But, you know, wisdom speaks, but you don't have to listen. You know how that goes, so. Does everybody follow what I'm saying? Okay, so a lot of times we get up and we do some things and we don't always understand why, but let me get back to the scripture because it's going to be very important for us to understand the blessings that God is trying to bring to you and some things that you're going to have to lay down as a foundation, okay? It's about foundational truth. You can't get away from that when you come into the kingdom of God. So Father, we ask that you arrest our hearts right now, that you open our hearts to receive your word. Um, I just thank you for all you're doing in all of our lives, in spite of the darkness that is around us. I thank you for all that you're doing in all of our lives. Open our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I think all of you would agree with me right now that we've been so encompassed with a great cloud of tragedies that are around us. Uh, not only tra tragedies, but um, there are some calamities that we don't have control of. There's some evil tidings we've seen around us. It's like failure, 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 failure. Or disappointment after disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. We've seen that in the body of Christ. So if your faith is weak, you're going to faint. The scripture says, and you can put it up, Chris, out of um, uh, Proverbs 24.10. It says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is weak. Okay? It's not for our strength to be weak. Okay? That's why the scripture is there. It's not for us to be weak, but it's for us to be strong. Amen? 
okay? Regardless of how we look at it, the scripture that we just read out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says, we have a treasure in earthen vessels. You need to know what that treasure is. We have a treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power, you only need power when you're about to do something. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of, because if it's of us, we lose. But God wants you to win. Everybody there today. You have to know what is your base so that you can understand, you can move in that, and you can win. You're going to encounter more misfortunes in these days to come than we've ever encountered. Not necessarily for you personally, but you'll see the tragedies. You'll see so many things, okay? But if you walk in a place of carefulness, you can't lose. That means you study what's before you. You understand what's before you. And you walk in the things that God has for you. Amen? Okay? You cannot lose your walk of faith. That's most important. You can't lose your joy. You can't lose the blessings that God has for you, okay? You can lose them if you don't move with wisdom. It doesn't matter what age you are. If you are five, you will lose out on a blessing if you don't move in wisdom. We think our kids are too young to understand things. Our kids are not too young to understand. They know. My three-year-old granddaughter was telling me one of her kids in her class need Jesus. I was okay with that. She said, he mean. He's mean. I said, well, you got to show him love. No, he needs time out. You know? <laughs> but there's going to be affliction that is around us, and we're going to be a part of it in some way or another. But you cannot let that affliction wane your faith. Are you hearing me? Some of you get to the place where you're feeling it and you're saying, I got to do something different. That's not always true. Are you there? We have seen among us loss of family, loss of jobs, loss of homes, loss of integrity, loss of so many things. Okay? It's not a spirit that's among us. It is a time that God is putting us through some things. That's part of the threshing floor that we have to bear. Everything moves to the side. And the Lord is asking us, will you forsake me too? Will you? When everyone else is lost, will you forsake me too? You're going to give up on me and you're going to go another way. We're disappointed, disappointed, disappointed. We can't do that. How many of you know that? Amen. We have to continue to keep ourselves with the Lord, okay? In order for you to progress, even from this place, you're going to have to change the way you think. Amen. I'm sorry. You can't continue to think the same way. I could do this, and I meant no. You're going to have to change the way you think. You're going to have to think like God. You have to know his nature to know how he thinks. That's the most important thing. You have to be able to think like God. If you check your mindset and your heart, you will know right away when a tragedy comes what frequency you're on. Some of you are on the wrong frequencies. You ever notice, well, at least I do, um, when you're around certain people or um, around friends or around something, something comes that's tragic. People will automatically, or something that's a misfortune, they will get an attitude right away. Bam! They ain't thought nothing. How many of you know that's the wrong frequency? Okay. And we always try to prepare people, you know, in case of a fire, this is the route you ought to go. So you have fire drills, okay? Perfect practice makes perfect, 
Okay, you can know the fire drill all you want, but you may go that way and the fire might be that way. Everybody follow me. It's important that you understand the frequency that you need to be on. And that means you need to hear the voice of the Lord at all times. It doesn't matter. You have to hear God's voice. You have to know God's voice. And even when you don't hear God's voice, you have to know what you have to depend on. Now let's put the rubber on the road here. Okay? Some of us depend on the wrong things. And there are laws that are out there that we totally usurp. Let me give you an example. Most of us, when we get up and move, we depend on our gift. I've been out there. <laughs> yep. Through the legs, round the back. In fact, I was five foot seven, like Spud Webb, and I could dunk the ball. That's impressive when I'm on the court by myself. <laughs> you put other people out there with me, I, I had to get a run before I could do anything. Are, are y'all with me? Okay? You're good when you're all by yourself. And your gift doesn't do anything for you when you get a whole slew of enemy coming up against you. And all of us think, well, I'll just move out of my gifting. There was one in the scriptures, it was actually many more, but I'm going to describe one, who moved out of his gifting and found himself with his eyes plucked out. That was Samson. His gifting was not strong enough for the deception of a Delilah. Are, are y'all with me? Okay. So he lost some things. And what do we do today? We take our gifting and we think we got it. Amen. Amen. Can I help you? Can I come home? Mm -hmm. So you know you're going to work and you know you like the guy over in another department. So you're going to spruce yourself up to look like that. Are you there? Yep. Yeah. And young man, your pants is going to fall if you're in the wrong place. Or if you're in the right place, you're going to make sure your hair is cut right. Because there's a girl on the scene. I'm sorry. That's what, that's what the culture does. And guess what? You're trying to operate out of your gifting and not out of the wisdom of the Lord. All right? Your gifting can never get you to where God wants you to be. It'll never get you there. It'll shrink on you. In fact, there's something you need in, even to operate out of your gifting. It's not your foundation. Your gifting can help you, but it should not be your coverall. Are y'all with me today? Okay? You got to go beyond that. You're going to come up short every single time if you try to move out of your gifting. Think about Joseph. Joseph had a prophetic gift, but he landed in jail. But what, hit, what got him out of jail was not his ability to prophesy, but his ability to operate in faith. Are you there? That's your foundation. You can't move off of that. Faith comes by and hearing by. And how can they hear without a? Come on, that's all in the scriptures. But many of you will not show up in church because it doesn't matter to you. But you can't move away from the gift. Abraham was, taught, was, was called the father of the faith, not the father of the gift. You have to get away from that and get your foundation set on the law of faith. None of us can go forward without the law of faith. Amen? Okay? The scripture tells us in the world you're going to have tribulation. It's going to come. Let me read it. John 16, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you may have peace. In me you may have peace. In me you may have peace. In the world you will have. Tribulation. tribulation. That's a definitive. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I've overcome that. 
So Paul, when he opens up in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he's trying to bring us the reality of who we are and how we have to stand. If you remember the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians, it talked nothing about the gifts. I mean, it talked all about the gifts, okay? And Paul had to come and bring correction because they didn't know how to use the gifts. And a lot of times we're trying to use our gifts, trying to get things pushed forward. You know, uh, we want to prophesy, we want to do this. Listen, you can prophesy, you can demonstrate, you can work miracles, you can do anything that you want to do. But if your faith is not strong, you're going to faint in the day of adversity. We have been going through so much. Some of you have I, no, no cause to you, but because there was no wisdom in the upper office, you've lost jobs, people have forecasted wrong. That's the wrong thing to do. I'm sorry. What do we do now? We walk by faith and not by sight. Your gift will make room for you when another door opens. But until the door opens, you've got to understand something. You've got to still move in faith. Are y'all with me today? So I can't get you to lose heart today. Not today. You're going through some things, but we came this far by faith. We're going to make it by faith. Everybody with me today? So I'm going to go back to the scripture. We're going to talk about the scripture just for a moment. And I want us to understand some things that Paul says to us that is very important. So I can let you go after that. He says, but we, ha we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Understanding that there's a treasure inside of you that will pull forth the excellency of the power of God. What is the treasure that's inside of you that will pull forth the power of the excellency of God? That treasure is your faith. Don't go anything, any place from that. Now, if I was asked people to explain the law of faith, they could not really explain the law of faith. But Paul gives us the law of faith right now. So listen, all of us have to begin to change some things. Can you put that scripture up um, that Susie read this morning out of the book of Exodus? I believe it was chapter 14. And thank you, Susie, for that scripture. Um, it's all about where we are today. Um, Exodus 14 and was it 13? Okay. Um, I, I like this scripture. Um, and I, did, let me just give you the story. I'm going to read the scripture. But let me just give you the story the way God saw it. Moses came unto him. He crying. Oh, God, we got, the Egyptians are coming. We got a Red Sea right here. And here God says to him, what you crying unto me for? You're in some affliction right now. Why are you crying unto me? You need to stop it. So he goes on in verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show you today for the Egyptians whom you have. Come on, everybody. Come on, y'all got to say that louder, louder. Whom you have seen, ye shall see them. See them again no more forever. For the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your Verse 15, I need to go there. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they what? Go forward. But he said to them, That which you see today, you can't see no more. That's the basis of this message today. You can't continue to look at what you see, well, I'm just this, I'm just that. Some of you still want to be babies. I'm sorry. You've been weaned from the paps. Move forward. Are you there? You can cry all day long, but we got to get it together. So Paul says, you have this treasure. He, and, he, and I love it in verse 8. He says, we are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. You're going through something and you want somebody to feel sorry for you. God says, listen, this ain't the time for me to feel sorry for you. This is the time for us to get up and walk in faith. Okay? 
I want you all to be of good cheer, Paul is telling them, and I'm telling you the same thing. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be, made, may be manifested in our body. Not when we leave here now. Okay? Everybody there? Okay? So I'm going to go down to verse 13. Very important. And since we have the same spirit of faith, According to what is written, I believe and therefore I You know where your faith is just by what's coming out of your mouth. My wife and I, we were traveling to Philadelphia and she said something. I don't know what it was. It wasn't nothing major. But she said something and I looked over at her and I said, Denise. She knows whenever I say Denise, that means something's big coming. I need you to take your lips off of that. When I say that, you know what that means? That's a cultural saying for saying, you don't need to bring that out of your mouth and you don't need to talk about it. You keep your mouth shut when it concerns that subject. Take your lips off of it. Are y'all with me? When it concerns your affliction, take your lips off of it. Stop talking about what you're going through and talking about what you're coming through. Amen. Are you with me today? Let me go on for the scriptures. I'm going to drop down to verse 16 through 18. We're going to spend our time there. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed. How often? Day by day. day, by day. One of the things I need you to understand, affliction only holds an external value in you. So when you're going through, it's an external thing. Don't worry about it. Amen. Okay. This, he goes on to tell us in verse 17, for our light affliction is but for, come on, a moment. All right. Listen to what he says. Is working for us, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, okay? Don't worry about the misfortunes, okay? It's only for a moment. Anything that is evil or tragedy in your life is momentary. If you can hold on, you can get to the other side. You can complain all you want, but if you would just hold on, just a little while longer, you're going to get to the other side. I don't like this. I just, huh, hmm. If you have a word of prayer, how many know you get some peace through that thing? Okay? Got to get peace. If you could just hold on, you'll get to the other side. And most of us faint in the day of adversity because, guess what? Our, our strength, our faith is weak. So the law of faith says you have to hold on. And Paul says, I give you something to hold on to. So here, in this particular passage, Paul tells us how to hold on. It's all in how you see. Now listen to me. Some of you have to grow in how you see. Because if you are 14 now, and you're thinking like this, it's going to affect when you get 30. If you are 30 thinking like this, it's going to affect when you get to be 45. You have to uproot the values of this world and start taking on what's not of this world. I was talking with my wife last night, and I was telling her, I said, you know, everybody's worried about retirement. Everybody's worrying about 401ks. Ain't going to be no 401ks after a while, Okay. You're going to have to walk by faith when you retire. Okay? It's a must. You've got to walk by faith now, absolutely. But when you retire, it's, it's going to be a must. And you say, well, I'm, you know, I don't put this much. I had a friend I was talking to. He done put, he had well over $100,000 in his 401k. And guess what? The company is going belly up. Guess what happened to the 401k? It went belly up with it. Bam! You say, man, I put all my money aside. That's my money. No, no, you trusted in an investment. 
and in investments they lose. Your faith should not be built on an investment. Your faith should be built on Jesus. Amen. According to the scriptures, we're going to have more than enough. That's where you have to put your level of faith. And some of you, you know, you don't even have a 401k. You can't even spell 401k. You know I'm telling the truth, right? So it's not about, I mean, you know, it's not about that. It's about your trust in the Lord and your trust in the power of his might and understanding that God will come through for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So here Paul tells us, he says, I don't want you to lose heart. Okay, very important. I don't want you um, to lose heart. Okay. He goes on to say, even though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Okay. All right. There's a process. Outward man's going to perish. Inner man's going to be renewed. There's a process. You have to go through the process. Amen. For our light of fiction is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal, everybody say eternal, eternal. weight of glory. So here he says, I don't need you to walk in the moment anymore. I need you to walk eternally. Watch what he says. Now he tells you how to get the eternal weight. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are, that's the evil, but the things which are, tragedy comes up. The first thing you do is comment on what you see. Hear the spirit of the Lord. The law of faith says, only speak what you don't see. Because if you speak what you see, you bring in more tragedy. You can complain, but he says, I need you to speak on what you don't see. Because what you don't see, go back to verse 17, okay? What you don't see, it works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. No, this is what God's going to do. 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 No, this is what God's going to say. This past weekend, boy, I tell you, this, this message was tried with me so much. My mom was going through so much pain. I pulled the chair up, sat down next to her bed, and she said, move that chair. What if I have to get out of here? I said, well, you're going to have to climb over me. <laughs> so I sat there, and I started singing to her. We come this far by faith. And I saw her lips starting to work with me. Saints of God, you have to understand something. Situations are not going to change until you start speaking the faith. You have to speak the faith. I told some of you, when I was in college, and we were sitting around in a group, they would test me all the time. Kev, what you going to be when you get out of here? An attorney. That's a teacher of the law, by the way. I'm an attorney. I'm not a natural attorney. I'm a kingdom attorney. Are y'all following me? Another guy was saying, I'm going to be an FBI agent. And he did. He became an FBI agent. But we wouldn't talk what we were. Simple, poor college students. Are you there? We, we, we would talk something else. And it was so funny. Um, my brother was talking to some person down there, down in New Jersey. And he said, well, you got to wait till the lawyer gets here. Now, he didn't know I, said, <laughs> I ever said that, but he told him, he said, you got to wait till the lawyer gets here. He was talking about me, all right, because he's he going to move by the law, you know. How many know you got to know your stuff, okay? You have to know your stuff, and you have to know what God shows you. So the only way you get there is by you moving and operating in the things that God has for you. Let me give you two scriptures before I let you go. I know this is, was long. Chris, um, 
You don't have this one, but the Holy Spirit just said this to me, and we're going to go there. I like when the Holy Spirit talks. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 4. Beginning at verse 26. I'm in the King James. And he said, So the kingdom of God is as is if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not. Okay, it's not for you to always know how. Next verse. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, then af after that the full corn of ear. First the blade, then the ear, then the Okay, everybody come with me. First the blade, then the ear. Then the full corn of air. Somebody say, it's a process. Okay, so you have to begin to work the process. If you can't see right, don't open your mouth. We believe and therefore speak. Change how you believe. Find scriptures that align to what you're believing for. Are you there? Now, you ain't even at the blade stage. You're just casting seed into the ground. Start casting the seed into the ground. When you find the scriptures, you got to read the scriptures. Read the scriptures. Read the scriptures. What are you doing? You're putting a seed in the ground and you're watering it. You're putting a seed in the ground and you're watering it. You're putting a seed in the ground and you're watering it. People don't want to hear that today. You know why? Because that's kingdom language. And whether you got a degree, you don't have any degrees, you don't have any education, whatever it might be. I know it's education. All right? So whatever it might be, whatever you, you have to know, you got the word of God and you can stand on the word of God. When you put that seed in the ground, when you put it in the ground, you're going to start seeing things. Revelation is going to come to you. He says, I give you a spirit of wisdom in revelation, in the knowledge of me. That's what God is saying. So now comes the blade. Don't, don't, don't go any further beyond what you start seeing. Say what you see. Say what you see. Keep saying what you see. Keep speaking the scripture. Water in the seed. If you water the seed, you'll not only get the blade, but you'll get the ear. And you'll get the corner of the ear. And most of us give up when the blade comes along. Not when the ear comes. Listen, we give up on the blade. Why? Because we're so impatient. And we move on the wrong system. And we tear down what we're building up. We don't already put the sickle in. Why? Because we're not believing for the truth. Faith takes time. It takes patience. You, this thing that's coming forward, it might have took 18 years to mess that thing up. You got to give God some time. He'll redeem it. But you got to give God time to clean it up. Amen. Your kids aren't stupid. Don't call them stupid. You didn't name them stupid. Don't call them stupid. They're not fools either. Because you are not a fool. Are you there? I have a friend. Every time I say something out of line, she said, intelligente. Meaning, <laughs> you think you're smart, but you're not. <laughs> How many of you know we're smart? <laughs> Amen? You have to understand who you are. You have to understand, I put the word out there, I can get what I need to get. Yes, you're going through. But you got to put the word out there. What will that word do? It's going to bring strength to you. Okay? First the, now listen to me. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn of ear. The blade has no strength to it. It's a leaf. Okay? Then the ear. Okay? You need strength first. You need strength before you can get to harvest. Are y'all with me? Final scripture. Romans. 
Don't lose heart. Whoever you are out there, don't lose heart. Romans. <clears throat> there is therefore now no to those who are in. It's impossible for you to fail. God, how can you say that? Well, he conditions it too. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. If you look at the things which are seen, that's according to the flesh. If you look at the things that are not seen, that's according to the spirit. Are you there? Okay. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin. One's a flesh. One's a spirit. Jesus said, my words are life. And they are spirit. Okay? You have to understand. You got to hold to life. Don't speak death. Y'all need to correct one another. Are you there? Don't say that around me. Don't be cussing around me. Speak truth. Amen? Amen. We shall not die, but live. Y'all there today? Verse 5. This is it. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, the things that they see. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit, that which is in the supernatural, that which comes by revelation. For to be carnally minded is only death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity, hatred against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. It is not subject to faith. It is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are of the flesh cannot please God. But we walk by and not by. That's important. You got to get up and you got to stand on your faith. It has nothing to do. You can tell me all day about how you can prophesy. You can tell me all day how you can part the waters. Listen, Moses did not see the promised land because he didn't work in miracles. He worked the miracles, but he didn't see the promised land because he missed his faith moment. He missed his faith moment. David was denied some things because he missed his faith moment. If we're going to fall, it's because we're not moving in our faith moment. Now, I want you to take a moment and look at the people that are around you. These are the people that's going to push your faith. They're going to stretch you. They're going to push you out. They're not going to allow you to just, you know, well, I'm just going to love on you. Now, you may not like your mama, your daddy. You may not like your husband, your wife on particular times. But let me tell you something. They push your faith. They push your faith. That's where we are. We got to be around people who are going to push our faith. Okay? Tell me when I'm wrong. Tell me when I'm off kilter. Don't let me move that same way. Tell me when I got to do it right. Okay? I don't feel like going to school this morning. Oh, no, son. You're getting up to go to school this morning. Oh, I don't want to do that. No, you're going to do it. Now, you need to go apologize. I don't feel like apologizing. Ba -ba 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 -ba. No, you need to apologize. You ain't apologizing because somebody else did wrong. You apologizing because you brought an offense. Are y'all there? Now listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Somebody comes to you and they say something to you that throws you way off. And you either say something back to them or you deck them. And you say they started it. Isn't that what you're going to say? <laughs> they started, right? It seems like it's right, right? Okay, all right. Are you there? But the scripture says we, set, we stand as a mirror. Maybe there was an offense in you, this goes much deeper, that brought that offense. And you say, well, I never did anything wrong. Maybe it wasn't you. Maybe it was your daddy. Maybe it was your mama. I ain't talking about her. But I'm talking about an offense. And you're suffering the offense because of a generational issue. Stay with me. How come I got to deal with it? Because God wants the curse to stop with you. Do you follow me? You stop the curse. Maybe it happened and everything, you know, in the old days, everything was hush-hush. We're not going to talk about it. 
We're not going to let anybody know. Today, everybody just wears everything all out in the open. <laughs> Maybe that offense was there, and now it's coming. It's giving you the opportunity to love back. And maybe your love back should have been done 40, 50, 60 years ago. But now what you have literally done is you've closed the door to that iniquity in your family. And you've opened up the place of truth. So that your family can walk in truth. And you can say to your kids, no, we have to love everybody. We can't hate. We got to love everybody. Well, <laughs> I hear this all the time. Well, you don't know what they did. We had to sit in the back of the bus. <laughs> I enjoy sitting in the back of the bus. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was always told, don't sit in the back of the bus. No, when we went to school, back of the bus was always hot. You know, so during the summer, winter time, sit in the back. <laughs> but no, don't sit in the back of the bus. Listen. I understand what we went through. I understand what our people went through. I understand. It, there is an, a generation or a culture under here that has not been under slavery. Okay? You don't get to own that. You know, no matter who your people are, I don't care. You don't get to own that. Every culture has been under slavery. Check the books. And that's because the devil rose up in every single one of our cultures. You have to get yourself to the place where you understand we don't hold nothing. We forgive and we move forward. Are you, that, that's one of the primary laws of faith. Not looking at what is seen. Well, they did. But what is not seen. Honoring people in love. Are y'all there? Give out the love. Tell your neighbor, we're giving out the love. Come on to your feet. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise this morning. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. How many know he loves us? Hallelujah. Go there for me, Andy. Hallelujah. Start with that verse. Let's sing that.